little while ago, we did a video that mentioned a kit mango that was apparently on a dwarfing rootstock. And that got people's attention. We got a few comments about like asking for more information on dwarfing rootstock. And unfortunately, I don't know a lot about it, but I'll tell you what I do now. Uh, right here is a Valencia pride. And this tree has been in the ground for more than 10 years. Now Valencia pride is a really big tree and this is more of the typical size. This is Valencia pride and this has been in the ground for about 20 years, but we've been cutting it back every year, like a lot of it back, you know, very large branches out of this tree. So it, it would be a whole lot bigger than this hadn't we been trimming. So I suspect that this tree is on a dwarfing rootstock. Uh, it doesn't ever seem to grow a lot. It's a nice size and it's in an extremely similar situation to this one right next door. I mean, you know, there, it's, there's always something different about one location versus another, but this is about as close as you can get. So I also want to show you a few more things around the grove. So here's the tree that inspired this whole video. This is a kit mango tree. More than 10 years ago, I was buying some three gallon mango trees and this was one of the trees I bought. I, it was a bushy kit mango tree, which is unlike a lot of the, almost all of the kit mango trees in a three gallon pot. They tend to just sort of shoot up straight. This one had some branches. Uh, so I bought it, brought it back, and it didn't really seem to grow very much in the pot. So about eight years ago, we planted it here and it has grown, but this does not look like a 10 year old kit mango tree. Uh, it looks much more like the Julie that's right here next door. And uh, this Julie has been in the ground for the same amount of time as this kit. So anyway, definitely like this tree. It's a novelty. It's small. It's productive. And when I was out there at the nursery picking out mango trees, you know, I do have this sort of way of picking out plants that, you know, sort of favors bushy trees. But basically, I just got lucky. Uh, they do hundreds of thousands of trees a year. And this particular tree was grafted on a rootstock that was slightly different than the other rootstocks. And we have a very short kit mango tree. This is a carry tree. Now carry is a small tree, but usually they're not this small. This was intentionally grafted on a known dwarfing rootstock. This tree is very productive and very small. It's about seven feet possibly. I haven't trimmed it at all and it's been in the ground for six or seven years. Now here's another situation having a vigorous variety on a dwarfing rootstock. The grafted part of this tree is Phoenix. Now Phoenix is a wonderful fruit but the tree itself is usually very vigorous. But this one is just beautiful. Uh, it's on a dwarfing rootstock. It was a special gift to us a couple years ago, and I put it in the ground. This is what it did after about two years in the ground. Uh, it practically looks like a Julie tree. Uh, it's just beautiful, very healthy, and look at all these ends here. Of branches. Each one of those has the potential of flowering and possibly producing fruit. So we're really looking forward to having Phoenix fruit again this year and hopefully we'll get a fair amount on this little tree. Uh, so anyway, Phoenix on a dwarfing rootstock looks great and of course tastes great. So mango trees can be a little overwhelming for a lot of people. 
there are some very vigorous mango trees that want to be big trees and a lot of people do not want to trim their mango trees once or twice or even more often than that each year and so dwarfing rootstocks is really an important sort of trend in the mango industry unfortunately i don't know of anybody who sells dwarfing rootstock or seeds for root, you know, rootstock that will dwarf whatever is grafted onto it. So here's what I know about dwarfing rootstocks. It's not very much, so if anybody out there knows more, please come and be on a video about dwarfing rootstocks. We all would like to know more. What I know is that there seems to be some level of incompatibility between the rootstock and what is grafted onto it. And that the rootstock itself can be a large tree, uh, but when something is grafted onto it, whatever is grafted onto it, it does not have the vigor that the rootstock does. The so. two varieties that seem to be easily dwarfed, at least from what I understand, are carry and kit and of course those are Florida varieties I don't know about the varieties around the world but we saw the kit mango tree we saw a carry there are rootstocks dwarfing rootstocks that seem to dwarf all varieties of course those are really really interesting so one more thing I want to show you two potted plants and these two trees both in three gallon pots identical soil mix in both pots. They're both honey kiss mangoes. This tree right here is actually younger than this tree over here. And this particular tree I bought just sort of as a novelty. This is really, really dwarf. Um, this is the end of the rootstock right here. So it is this much uh, growth of the honey kiss. Uh, crazy. So what am I going to do with this little honey kiss mango tree? All right. It's probably going to take about 10 years for it to get to the top of this bamboo stake. And so uh, it's really not worthwhile to grow it as a fruit tree. So my plan right now is to cut it off, cut the grafted part off of this rootstock. The graft comes down to about here, and that shouldn't be a problem because usually when rootstocks are cut back and, and sprout out, they will sprout close to where the top of the root is. So this is a sort of a long-term project, but after that sprouts out, then I'll wait for it to mature, grow a little bit to like normal size, plant it in the ground and hope that it produces fruit in five years or however long it's going to take. It's going to take a while. And then with that fruit, plant the seed and see if I can replicate this. If I can graft honey kiss onto that particular rootstock and try out kit also on that rootstock and those varieties are dwarfed on the, this rootstock then that would be fun because even just two varieties dwarf is better than zero. <laughs>